Hello and welcome to this episode of UI Builder Bytes. Uh, it's been a while, but in this episode, uh, we are going to take a look at declarative actions uh, in a workspace and uh, specifically how you can add a button to your list component uh, that will then be able to interact with events within UI Builder. So there was a great uh, post and video put out recently uh, by Arnaud, uh, who is everyone's favorite uh, Chrome browser extension developer. And uh, he put something out around how to add a declarative action or a button to a form uh, and then have it do something in UI Builder. Uh, and so I had a situation this week where somebody was asking how they do that with a list and uh, you know after playing with a, a little bit, we got it to work. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is uh, we're going to kind of recreate that uh, in a list. Uh, this isn't something that I've practiced very much, uh, so we may run into some issues, and I'm, I'm going to try to keep everything in the video uh, so that uh, it's helpful to people that are looking to do something like this. So let's go ahead and open up UI Builder, and we can see uh, what we're going to do. So I think I'm going to create a new UIB page. Um, I've got a new use case that I've been playing with uh, that I'm using for some training uh, called Fleet Vehicle Management. Uh, so this use case is basically uh, your company has a whole bunch of vehicles that people drive and you have to maintain them. It's actually really similar to an ITSM use case, uh, but it's always been one of my favorite use cases. So we're going to start with just a blank page. Uh, and we're going to call this uh, vehicle list. Uh, I'm not going to use a page template. Uh, I want to keep this demo as simple as possible. Uh, so we will hit done. We've got a page here. Uh, so let's add a container. And then I think on this page, all we're going to do is add a list component. So let's use the list component. So obviously with the list component, we get all sorts of crazy things here. Uh, but one of the things that we're going to be able to do is add a button up here uh, that then does something in UI Builder. So I think for our use case, uh, we will want to like just pop open a modal with a message on it or something if you hit the button. Um, and uh, so, you know, there are ways to add UI actions and do things. Uh, on the back on the back end, but sometimes you want a button that shows up in your form or in your list that then can interact with something happening in UI Builder. Um, so maybe you have like a modal that pops up or something else uh, and you want to interact with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to configure the UI Builder side of things first. Uh, and we will start by adding a modal. And uh, let's just do a quick alert modal. Um, so header and body copy. So let's say uh, Brad's modal and then uh, we will say that we're surprised. We got it. Uh, let's say success. And I think that's a fine size for a modal. Uh, so let's go ahead and save this. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create uh, a handled event for my page. Uh, so handled events are really useful. Uh, it's just an event that I define on my page. Uh, so we're going to call it, um, let's call it uh, list, uh, list open modal. Uh, there's some naming conventions for these. Uh, this is kind of where I'm going uh, with this one. So let's hit add. All right, so now we have this handled event and now it shows up up here. Um, so I'm still to get here, I clicked on body and then in the events panel for the body you know, container, it's the only thing that comes with the page, you have all of these events. So there's things like you know, the page is ready. Uh, this is if you want something to happen on page, page load, you can fire an event right here. Uh, so for ours, we are going to open a modal, open or close modal dialog. We're going to say open. We're going to pick the modal, which is our alert modal. 
All right, and I don't need to pass any display options, so let's go ahead and hit Add. <clears throat> so the nice thing about this page event mapping is you can imagine if maybe if you had an event uh, where you were going to add like four event handlers to it, and then you were wanna, gonna, going to want to do that multiple times on the page, um, that, that could be kind of rough. So doing that as a handled event on the page uh, makes that a little easier. So, you know, if we were going to do four different things on this open modal event, I could just, uh, you know, write that once and then call this event from other events. Um, so that's, or, or call it from a script or wherever. So that's one of the nice things about these uh, page events. All right, so we have this all done. Uh, this is about all we should have to do uh, from within UI Builder. Uh, and here is where it gets a little more interesting. Um, so we're going to click back into the platform side of things. And I'm going to start by typing in list here. And what we're going to want to do is create a list action. Uh, so this is under workspace experience. Uh, this is a list action. And this is going to create us a declarative action assignment. Uh, and, uh, and, but, but associated with a list. So let's go ahead and hit new. Uh, so action label, uh, we're going to call this, uh, open vehicle modal. And then the action name is a lowercase dash uh, naming convention. So that's what you should be following. Uh, we're going to make this a UX client action, UXF client action. And then we are going to create a new client action for that. Uh, the key is going to be Uh, we're just going to call it open vehicle modal and then the label, uh, the naming convention is all caps and underscores. And then we have to tell it what this is applicable to. So if we want to look at some of the options here, uh, there's all sorts of places where you can put these actions. Uh, so a VTB, if you've got an EVAM inside of a specific field, form, list, playbooks, uh, so you have different options. We're going for list, uh, and you'll, you, uh, you may have noticed in there there's also a related list. We're not going to use that, uh, but you can you know, change and specify between the two of them. Um, so that's it. I'm going to hit submit. And then uh, instead of global, this is going to be on our vehicle table. which is this one. Uh, I don't think we need any of this other stuff. So I'm going to hit submit. We're going to go UX action config. I'm just going to go to the table name here. All right. So what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to create a new action config. Uh, and so what this action config do, this is a thing that you don't have to do every time. Uh, you just have to do this one time uh, per experience. So we're going to call this um, fleet vehicle management config. I'm going to save it. And then what you do have to do for every action is that you then have to link your action to a config. And you're going to do that through list actions here. So this is a many to many. Uh, and so this is my action configuration. And then we remember we, we created that uh, declarative action assignment and open vehicle modal uh, is what, uh, what we called that. So I'm gonna hit submit. And we got our uh, list action here. It also showed up in our declarative action assignments list. This will show basically all of the different actions in one list. And then the other thing I need to do is grab the sys ID of this actions configuration. This is again a thing you will only have to do once. And then I'm going to find my experience record. Uh, so my fleet vehicle management experience record is right here. 
And then it actually comes with an action config ID UX page property, but I have to give it, since I created a new one, uh, I have to give it the right sys ID. So what I like to do is say, are they different? They are different. So let's get rid of that one. Uh, and now I have my UX page property. So we created an action assignment. Within the action assignment, we created an action payload definition. Then we created a new UX actions configuration because this is the first action I'm creating for this workspace or for this experience. Um, but I would not have to do that in the future. Uh, and then I added to the related list of that action, uh, I added the specific action that I'm creating and then I updated this action config ID. Um, so that, that's not a thing that you have to do. Again, uh, this will be embedded in a community article and we'll have the steps in there. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so that's the action config. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and pause here and go back and refresh. See if my button shows up on the list. Uh, what if we open it here? Uh, what? Oh, this is why it doesn't. All right. You know what? I added this list and I did not configure it. So we're going to, this is uh, Brad working real time, figuring things out. So we're going to make that vehicle. And then the title is going to be uh, all vehicles. And look at that. When we change the table, our button did show up here. So I'm going to save. Uh, we'll refresh. I should get a couple of vehicles in the list. And then I have my button. It's not going to do anything yet uh, because I haven't really told it what to do, what I want it to do. So what I want it to do is I want that button, when it gets clicked, I want it to fire this event, this list open modal event. So I'm going to grab the name of that event. And then we're going to do kind of our last, uh, our last thing here, which is to do the add-on event mapping. So I'm going to, there may be a way to get this without the table name, but I'm just going to stick it in there. This is the six sys UX add-on event mapping list. Uh, and so we are going to create a new add-on event mapping. Uh, we're going to call this uh, open vehicle modal. Uh, and then this is an important part, the source element ID, uh, since this is going on a list, that's actually the, uh, the name of my list. So it's going to be list underscore one. So we're going to call this list underscore one. Source declarative action is going to be open vehicle modal. And then parent macro opponent is the actual page uh, that this is showing up on. So it's going to be called vehicle list. And then target event, it's going to pull all of the page events from my page. So I should have a list open modal, right? So this is, uh, this is really kind of the secret sauce. The magic uh, is this record. This is how I'm connecting that button to an event in UIB. So let's submit. And I have had some caching issues uh, when doing this in the past. Uh, so let's go ahead and see if we do a hard refresh here. That was a command shift R. Uh, let's see if that works. So it should open the modal. Uh, it did not. Uh, let's see if we got any errors. No, those look like normal things. So what I'm going to do here <laughs> is I'm going to actually run a cache.do because sometimes I have found uh, that that helps. All right, so I cleared my cache. I logged out and logged back in. And let's see if this is going to work. And then let's see if it works now after we did. <clears throat> it did. 
All right, so that does work. Uh, I had to, uh, what I ended up doing was um, doing a cache.do and then logging out and logging back in. Uh, I have done this before without having to do a cache.do, so I'm not quite sure if that was the answer or not. Um, but if you are running into that issue, that may be what, uh, what solves it for you. So let's hit success.